We are in Boise, Idaho, where we are checking off yet another state capitol building. The building behind us is actually Idaho's second capital after the first territorial capital was deemed to be insufficient for the growing state government. So in order to expand space, they built a new capital building next to the existing territorial state capital building, but they only built the center section and the dome, and that was in 1912, I think we figured out. And then in 1920, they did phase two, which is when they added the east and west wings to the new Capitol building, and unfortunately tore down the territorial state capitol. Yeah, which was kind of a bummer because we found out that that original territorial capitol was designed and constructed by none other than Elijah Myers, who built our home capital of Michigan. So that's a bummer that that one got... Um, demolished but yes it was uh, it then it also demolished the central school which was located on the other side of the new capital allowing them to expand to the footprint that we have today which is the center the dome and the two big wings unfortunately also like in many other states they sort of destroyed the state capital as they used it over the years they put in drop ceilings they took statuary hall and turned it into office space they talked about workers gluing carpet onto marble yeah, and they even covered up the skylights, I think, to make those drop ceilings and to make cubicles and other spaces for offices. So, yes, the interior was pretty much uh, gutted in terms or ungutted, basically, in terms of what they did. So they had to actually gut the building during a restoration and take it back to its grandeur. Well, an interesting historical note here is that I think it was in the early 1990s, they had a fire in the Capitol. And when they went in to sort of restore that section of the Capitol from the fire, they did it with, you know, restoring some of the original marble and the woodwork. And the people that worked in those sections were like, this is really beautiful. Like, imagine if we had the whole building restored like this. And that sort of got, it was the impetus of getting a restoration project started, which they did eventually restore this building back to its you know, grandeur from the early 1900s. I was actually surprised when I read that that restoration wasn't until 2009, whereas many other capitals we visited had been sometimes in the 90s. This one was quite late. I'm probably sure doing due to funding and timing and just all the politics that go into that kind of a thing and understanding what needed to be undertaken to do a complete overhaul. Well, and also what was interesting about this one is not only did they restore the capital to what it was originally like, but they decided as long as we're doing all this work, can we expand again for state government? And so they did something really unique, which is they went, well, you said that you had read that the, the ground floor was really just more of a basement. It wasn't really anything special down there. So they redid that to make it really nice. It's a little visitor center kind of area now. And then they actually put underground wings out to the east and the west beyond. It's like an annex beyond the original capital, capital building, but underground. We're actually standing on top of them right now in this grass. And they used Texas's capital as a model for that, which also has these underground wings. And we have visited that. And now Michigan recently did the same thing. So that's becoming a new trend that we've noticed around state capitals, where you're in many cases, you are locked into a downtown city and blocks there's no room to expand so the only place you can go is up or down and most of them have chosen to go down and then put in skylights to look back up at the domes from in inside and so i think that's really cool so it's it's just a unique way of being able to continue modernizing you you modernize you get more space but you're able to keep the original historic building so it's great to see that that they are doing that now in many more states so now that we've talked a little bit about the building and the restoration of this capital, let's talk a little bit about what's actually inside it now. And the first thing you notice when you walk in is how bright and white it is because it's almost all marble or faux marble. And so it just gives this illusion of like a ton of sunlight coming in at all angles and at all times of day. There's all kinds of skylights. There's all kinds of windows. I mean, there's 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 ways to have light come in just about every single angle. And because there is so much marble in there, yeah, I, that was first thing when I walked in. I'm like, this is really bright in here. And I thought, that is a ton of marble. And then we found out it's not all real marble, but it's tough to tell what's real marble and what's not. And a lot of it is, and it, it gives descriptions in the little tour book of some of it came from Italy or Vermont or I don't remember all the other places, but then the rest of it's the faux marble it has marble dust in it. So that gives it that illusion. And then some of it's painted. Um, but so like the big eight columns inside the rotunda are steel columns with that 
it has a name that I'm not going to try to pronounce of the, the texture that's made to look like the marble, but then like the floor inlay is the marble and some of the wall stuff is marble. It actually seems to be that the only part of the state capitol that is not marble seems to be inside some of the rooms, like the executive offices, the governor's office, the secretary of state's offices, the legislative chambers. Then you get more of the wood feel. Again, some of it that is real and some of it is more, it's real, but it's made to look like other types of wood or like a mahogany kind of feeling. Speaking of the executive offices, we did stop by the office of the governor and they were very nice, very welcoming. They let you come in there and, and see what's going on. And uh, the governor was not in. So we were able to go in and see his ceremonial office. Also restored beautiful woodwork in there. One of the original roll top desks is there. That, that was really neat to see that. Yeah, with a new nice fireplace and a big table. And I could... That was just really pretty. That was one of those very inviting and homey feeling places. Mm -hmm. uh, the same cannot be said for the House and the Senate because you can't get to any of their things. No, we have been in capitals before where, you know, the doors are locked because they're not in session or maybe they are in session. But you've always been able to look through the windows and get a feel for it. And in here, it's like three double doors in and they're all blocked off with security gates and alarms. And it says no public beyond this point, which is kind of defeating the purpose of the public's house. So I'm not super pleased about that. Well, and I would say, I mean, what you talk about a lot of times, you can't get onto the, the chamber floor, you know, the Senate and the House floors. We understand that. But you can always go up generally to the, the gallery and see in the public viewing area and look down and see what the even whether in session or not in session, even those were locked up and you cannot get into them here. No, but we've even been to plenty of capitals where they'll let you onto the floor and you can even sit in the members chairs, which that's you can't do that in Michigan. But in other places, we've totally walked in because part Part of seeing the Capitol is that is the main part of state government is your legislature. So I find it odd that Idaho doesn't want you to see there, especially when they make such a big deal about it in the guest book of telling you about how one chamber is colored in red and one chamber is colored in blue and like the ornateness of the desks and the walls. And then you can't see any of it. So unfortunately, yeah. we have nothing to show you. I say we'd love to show you that video, but uh, we weren't allowed in there. Nobody is allowed in there. And the other thing is, that's odd is because they have such a short legislative session here in Idaho. They're not full time like in Michigan. We talked to somebody in the governor's office. They said like this year coming up, uh, they'll be coming into session on January 6th. And she said they generally are done by the end of March. Sometimes they bleed into April lately, but they're supposed to be done by end of March. So that's what three months really that you can get into the Capitol and see those legislative chambers when they're being used. But that's about the only time. Guess we'll have to come back and uh, sit in on session sometime. <laughs> It was disappointing that we couldn't see the legislative chambers, but overall, the Idaho State Capitol here in Boise is worth the stop. We think they're always worth the stop no matter what, but this one in particular was really pretty inside. Lots of good information you can learn and, and history and find out all about Idaho and how there's more here than just potatoes. So get here <laughs> to Boise, check out the Capitol. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.